In the first video, we looked at how to create a spin button and how to get it working for us to get this super fast uh, data input. So that's what we've done so far. In this video, we're looking at creating multiple buttons and specifically at how we can harness code, use VBA to help us speed up that process to create multiple buttons, to get them all positioned right, and also to get them pointing to the right cells so that they still do what we want them to do. So that's the aim uh, of this video. Let's get into the spreadsheet. We can see uh, the spin button is there and working well. Uh, but we want to create multiple spin buttons, so ideally uh, all of these cells will contain a spin button and would uh, be linked uh, to the uh, corresponding cell uh, in column D. So how are we going to do that? Well, a common technique you'll see me using on this channel is recording code. Excel offers this really nice facility in the developer tab this record macro facility here. And that means if we don't know what code to use, we can start the macro recorder, uh, do the operation manually, and Excel will record the code. We can then subsequently review the code and get it working for us. It's a really good idea if you don't know how to get started with some coding. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, that's our first step. I'm just gonna hit record macro. Excel asks for a name for the macro. It's a good idea to include or use an informative name here. So an informative name would be duplicate uh, spin button. Let's try that. And that means that when I'm in the Visual Basic Editor later, I will be able to easily recognize this code from the name of the macro. So I can just hit OK now, or just hit the Enter key on the PC. And Excel is now recording the code. If you go to the Developer tab, this icon is now Stop Recording. That means that Excel is currently recording the code. And then we go through very simply what we're trying to do. We're trying to duplicate this button. So I'm going to right click, hit copy, and then control V on the PC to paste it in. Very simple operation, but Excel has now recorded the code for doing that and we can exploit that and get it working for us. So where is that code? Let's go back to the developer tab. Remember to hit stop recording now hit stop recording now because we don't want lots and lots of code. And then we can go to the Visual Basic Editor. You can just click here. I'm gonna use the Alt F11 shortcut. Alt F11 to get the um, Visual Basic Editor open. And then you've gotta find the code that you've just recorded. And Excel will probably create a new module to um, house the recorded code. Uh, so I'm looking in module two here and I can recognize it's the code I recorded because this, the name of the macro is the name that I inputted uh, in the dialog box earlier. So duplicate spin button, I'm gonna clear out these annotations that Excel creates automatically, don't need those annotations. And then this is the code for the operation we performed, just duplicating the button, copy pasting the button. So we've gotta manipulate this code, get it working for us. Uh, I know immediately uh, we can streamline uh, this code. So firstly, I selected our spinner button, uh, which is called spinner five. And I'm just streamlining uh, this code because I know we don't need all of it. And then we can say shapes spinner five dot copy. And that means I can delete the next line of code. So I've taken two lines of code streamline them into one. There we go, spinner5 uh, dot copy. And then uh, we don't need this line of code either, uh, but we do need the active sheet dot paste line of code. Uh, so this is looking a lot better, uh, more streamlined. And I'm gonna delete this last line of code, which is selecting another button. I can tell just from reading the code, that's about selecting another button. That's not really important to us either. So the important code uh, we've got here. Uh, and at this point, I can test this code. Just gonna line up the Visual Basic Editor so that you can see. Um, and now I should be able to run this code. And then uh, what would you expect to happen when we run this code? Just gonna hit the play button there and we can see that the buttons uh, are appearing. So we've recorded that code, looked in the Visual Basic Editor, tweaked it, improved it a bit, and now we're playing it again 
Uh, so now we're getting it uh, working for us. So this is looking uh, pretty good, uh, but obviously, you know, we don't want uh, the buttons just appearing anywhere. We need to find a way to control the position uh, of the button. So let's look at how to do that next. I'm going to run some code that I prepared earlier to delete, um, to delete the spin buttons that we don't need, just to accelerate that process. Uh, so this code is going to delete all of the spinners apart from the first one. So I'm just going to run that and the spinners have gone now. I won't go through this code here, but it is in the download file if you want to uh, review it, you know, and uh, understand it there. Okay, so let's go back to the code uh, we recorded. Uh, and, and this is what we've got. And what we want to do is to control the position of the buttons that are uh, created. We're going to do that uh, using this line of code, which is selection. And selection will refer to the button that is created. If you do a paste, then the object that is created, uh, that will be the selection. So we can now do something to the selection to get the button uh, in the right place. We're going to use a really useful line of code, which is a useful command or property of the selection, you could say, dot top. So you can see it in the Visual Basic Editor there, dot top. And that is saying to Excel, this is where I want to position uh, the button. Another great line of code, very similar, uh, selection dot left. So they're the two lines of code you need to be able to position an object in Excel. The first line, selection dot top, that tells Excel um, in terms of uh, how far up or down, very simply speaking, how far down the spreadsheet to position the object. And the selection dot left command tells Excel how far across the sheet to position the object. So with these two commands, you can position the buttons uh, anywhere on the sheet. Uh, but we need a little bit more than this, selection dot top. Uh, we need to say, we need to give a value here or say to Excel, make this button the same as a cell on the spreadsheet. You can see um, the first button we created aligns perfectly with cell B4. Uh, so can we say to Excel, make the next button align with cell B5? In English, that's what we're trying to do. So let's try to translate that uh, into Visual Basic. So selection.top, we can say, make the top property equal to the top property of cell B5. Let's try that. Range B5 dot top, there we go. And then selection dot left equals uh, range B5 dot left. Okay, so what are we expecting to happen now? Well, we know that a new, a new spin button is going to be created. And then we're hoping, we're gonna to have to test it, we're hoping that these two lines of code, the dot top property, the dot left property, will position uh, the spin button exactly over cell B5, so it's perfectly aligned with cell B5. So let's give it a go. I'm gonna step into the code using the F8 key on a PC, that's gonna take us through it line by line. So we've got our button there, and then let's see what happens now. Yeah, that seems perfectly aligned, but it was created there in the first place. So let's change this to B8. There we go. So now we're expecting a new button to be created, a new spin button, and for the button to be positioned exactly over cell B8. Let's give that a go. There's the button. Okay, so we've just executed this line of code, which means that the button is now aligned with cell B8 in terms of uh, vertical alignment. So you can see it's level with row eight, but the horizontal alignment is not quite right yet. That's because we haven't executed the next line of code. And we have done now, you can see that the uh, horizontal alignment is now perfectly uh, in line with cell uh, B8. Okay, so that's a really nice technique there. We've just uh, recorded some code, copy pasted uh, the button, then reviewed the code, streamlined it a bit, and then added uh, these two really powerful commands, 
uh, dot top and dot left. They help us, they allow us to position objects in Excel and we've used um, those lines of code to position the button exactly where we want it to be. But we've still got a bit more to do to get these spin buttons working. For example, if I click on these spin buttons now, you can see that they're still pointing to the wrong cells. Uh, we're still um, linked to cell D19 there. So we want the cell reference to change and we also want to be able to create multiple buttons um, at the click of a button that's going to involve putting a loop into the code. So in the next video we're going to uh, continue with this task. Hope to see you then.